Upadeshamrita, verse 10. Karmi bhya parito harir priyataya vyaktim yayur gyaninas, te bhyo gyana vimukta bhakti parama, premaika nishtastata, te bhyasta pashupala panka jadrishas, ta bhyo pisa radhika, prishta tadvadiyam tadiya sarasi tam nashrayet kakriti. Translation The gyanis have attained the distinction of being dearer to Lord Hari than those who follow the path of karma. Even dearer to the Lord are those who have abandoned knowledge, understanding that the path of bhakti is higher. Even more superior are those that have attained love for Krishna. The lotus-eyed gopis are most exalted of all, and amongst them, Sri Radhika is certainly the dearmost of Sri Krishna. And Radha Kund is as dear to Krishna as she is. Therefore, which fortunate soul will not take shelter of Radha Kund? Illumination When Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was circumambulating Govardhan Hill in Rajamandal, he intuitively discovered Radha Kund concealed in a paddy field. At that time he was searching for Radha Kund, but none could say where it was. Then suddenly he came out from his trance, went to a paddy field where there was some water, took the water on his head, and began to chant the stotram of Radha Kund, as is mentioned in Padma Purana. Yatha Radha Priya Vishnus Tasya Kundam Priyam Tata Sarva Gopishu Savaika Vishnu Ratyanta Valava Just as Srimati Radhika is very dear to Sri Krishna, Similarly, her divine pond, Radha Kund, is also dear to the Lord. Of all the gopis, Srimati Radhika is the dearmost consort of Lord Krishna. From the Padma Purana From that time on, that place was understood to be Radha Kund. Later, Raghunath Das Goswami renovated the pond and lived there without any care in the world. One day, while going through Vrindavan, Sanatan Goswami saw Raghunatha sitting under a tree near the bank of Radha Kund and taking Krishna Nam. Then suddenly, one tiger came there, drank some water, and went away. Raghunath was undisturbed as he was deeply engaged in chanting the holy name. Sanatan approached him and told, This is the fact. One tiger came to drink water, and you were exposed here under the tree. It is my request to you that you please construct a thatched cottage. Raghunath managed to construct a small hut there, and he stayed there for his whole life. In his last days, sometimes he would take only a leaf cup of buttermilk and go on with chanting the holy name. He would chant one lakh of the holy name daily, and he would offer his obeisances a thousand times to different Vaishnavas. When he was about eighty, he would crawl on the banks of Radha Kund chanting, Jai Radhe, Jai Radhe, Jai Radhe. In this way he passed his days. At Radha Kund he was going through the writings of Rupa Goswami, and he also began to write literature, inspired by the divine works of Rupa Goswami. Raghunath also composed some verses that give us a clear idea about Radha Dasyam. Though we find this in the writings of Sri Rupa, it is even clearer in the writings of Raghunath Das. It is as if he is giving a challenge to Krishna that, if we do not find Radharani with you, we want to avoid you. We want Radha Krishna together, and if Radharani is not with Krishna, we don't want to approach that Krishna. Rather, we shall serve Radharani alone. This is clearly stated in his writings, and that is considered to be the highest acme of Gaudiya Vaishnav theology. Ashabharir Amrita Sindhu Mayai Katanchit Kalo Mayati Kamita Kilasam Pratam Hi Tvamchet Kripam Mai Vidasya Sinaiva Kimme Pranir Vrajena Chavaroru Bakarinapi O Varoru, Radha, I am passing my days with great difficulty, with an intense desire to attain the ocean of nectar. If you do not give me your mercy, then of what use to me are my life? the land of Raja, 
and Sri Krishna, the enemy of Baka. From Vilap Kushamanjali, 102. This shloka has given us the conception of our highest attainment in the school of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Das Goswami is addressing Radharani, O my goddess, O queen of Vrindavan, Asha Bharer, for a long, long time I have waited with great patience to have your mercy. Amrita Sindhu Mayai, and that is so sweet to me that I cannot avoid it. It is melting my heart, it is attracting my heart, and it is gracing my heart. It touches me so deeply that I can't avoid your service connection. Kalo Mayati Ghamita, somehow I have managed to come after such a long time. I am an impatient man. Please be gracious. Tvam chet kripam mai vida yasi naiva. If you are not propitiated and not gracious with me, then I have got no hope in my heart. I have come to the end of my present life. It is finished here. Kim me praner. What is the utility of my life even? It is useless. It will come to an end. No utility. Vrajena, what shall I do in this Vrindavan? Vrindavan is of no use to me. It is also not helpful in my life. I can't love this Vrindavan, which is associated with this Leela. Bakarinapi, what to speak of that, I can't even relish the company of Krishna without you. Without you, even Krishna has no meaning to me. I can't tolerate my life. Neither can I relish this environment. And if Krishna himself comes to grace me, I can't relish that without your connection. So please, be gracious to me. You are all in all to me. To achieve Krishna consciousness without you is no Krishna consciousness. Your position is such. It is so great and so beautiful. You are the center of the Leela of Krishna. I surrender to you for your grace, my Supreme Goddess. Sometimes, our Guru Maharaj used to explain this shloka among select disciples, and he became full of emotion. His face became red, and sometimes tears came to his eyes. When he used to explain this shloka, we could trace that he was quite at home, that he has come to his own plane. He has come home. We are not Vaishnavas. We are Shuddha Shaktas. One time at Radhakund, the Diwan, chief minister of Bharatpur state, came with his family, and they were circumambulating Radhakund by prostrating themselves on the ground and slowly advancing by measuring the length of each successive prostration. Paramananda Brahmachari came to Prabhupada and reported with much ardor, They have so much esteem for Radharani. Prabhupada then came out from his inner quarters and said, Yes, but their concern for Radharani and our concern for Radharani are quite different. They come to Radharani because she is Krishna's favorite. But our position is the opposite. We worship Krishna because he is Radharani's favorite. Our interest is in Radharani, and Krishna is her favorite, and only because she wants Krishna do we have any connection with him. The Gaudiya Vaishnavas know only Radharani, because Radharani can fully attract Krishna. And the remuneration for those that are serving Radharani is that they get the highest quality of rasa from Krishna, which cannot be found in any other channel. What comes through Radharani is of the highest quality. Therefore, the service of Radharani should be the summum bonum of our life. Prabhupada once told us that we are not Vaishnavas, we are really Shaktas, worshippers of the potency. Not Shaktas that worship the mundane potency, but Shuddha Shaktas, the real, original potency. Krishna's dedicating moiety is in Vraja. Both direct and indirect connections with Krishna come through her. We are concerned with Krishna only because our goddess Radharani has got connection with him, not otherwise. This is Radha's position. This is also the conclusion of Bhaktivinod Thakur. Radha bhajane yadi mati nahi bhela, Krishna bhajana thaba akarana ghela, Atapa rahita suraya nahijani, Radha virahita madhava nahimani. If you do not worship Radha, 
then the worship of Krishna will quickly leave you. I know the sun is never without heat and light, and I also know that Madhava is never without Sri Radha. From Gitavali 10, 8, 1 and 2 Uma Rama Satya Shachi Chandra Rukmini Radha Avatara Sabhe Amnayavani Hena Radha Paricharya Jankaradhan Bhakati Vinoda Tara Maghaye Charan The Vedas state that Uma, Rama, Satyabhama, Shachi, Chandravali and Rukmini are all incarnations of Radharani. Bhakti Vinod begs to stay at the feet of those devotees whose only wealth is the worship of Sri Radhika. From the Gitavali 10, 8, 7 and 8. Bhaktivinod Thakur says that if your mind cannot serve Radharani, then all your attempts towards Krishna will be useless. Akarana Ghela. If you cannot acquire earnestness towards the service of Sri Radhika, then all your labor for Krishna will go to hell. Atapa Rahita Suraya Nahijani. We cannot comprehend the sun without its heat. So also, no conception of Madhava is possible without Sri Radhika. In Prabhupada's language, she is the predominated moiety, and Krishna is the predominating moiety. The other half is fully represented by her. Dedication as a whole is represented by Sri Radhika. Uma Rama Satya Shachi Chandra Rukmini. There are so many examples of many pious ladies in the Puranas. Uma means the wife of Shiva. Rama means Lakshmi Devi. Satya means Satyabhama, the queen of Krishna. Shachi means the faithful wife of Indra. Chandravali means the antagonist of Radharani. Rukmini means the principal queen of Dwarka Krishna. They are all different parts of Radharani. They all spring from the main potency, which is known as Radha. Aradhana, who can serve, who can worship, who can give respect, who really loves Krishna and can render loving service unto him. Radha Avatara Shabhe Amnayavani. If we study the scriptures, then we'll find that the source of all these goddesses is Sri Radhika. Hena Radha Paricharya Jhankaradhan. Those that have the wealth of service to Sri Radhika, I want to fall at their feet and obtain the dust of their holy feet. I hanker after nothing else. This high ideal makes one great and not anything material. One who has got this high ideal is actually a wealthy man. Less valuable things are eliminated and our concentration is in the proper place. We are saved from wild goose chasing. Mahaprabhu came to show us this path and we find this if we go through his life and teachings. We are not fit to live at Radha Kund. According to the advice of Rupa Goswami, Radha Kund is the best place in Vrindavan and he urges us to stay there. However, once our Guru Maharaj ordered that a cottage should be built at Govardhan and I heard him say, we must serve our Guru Varga and so we shall have to go to the highest position of Radha Kund. But we won't stay there. We are not fit to live at Radha Kund. We must stay nearby at a lower place, Govardhan. We shall go to Radha Kund only to serve our gurus, and then we shall come back to Govardhan, and there we shall stay. Our superior gurus, Gorkishor Das Babaji, Bhaktivinoda Thakur, and others, they will live and serve at Radha Kund. We are not of such a high position. This should be our position, giving honor to the highest position of our guru. This difference between the disciple and the master should always be maintained. The master holds the highest position. In the highest place of Leela, he will be there, performing the highest form of service. But we will be a little lower. We shall live very near, but away. We shall come and serve them, and then go back again, because we have to attend their command, so we must be at an amiable distance. 
we shall take our stand in Govardhan and always be eager for the call that may come at any moment from Radha Kund, that we may help in any type of service. All our masters are playing there, and from a little lower position, we are to look at that, then it may be permanent. In Jagannath Puri, our Guru Maharaj lived in a bungalow at Chataka Parvat, that is thought to be Govardhan Hill. Yet Mahaprabhu has said, Govardhane na chadiya dhekite gopal. Don't climb over Govardhan Hill even to get darshan of Gopal. But Guru Maharaj constructed his bungalow on top of Chataka Parvat. When the construction was finished, deities of Vyas and Madhvacharya were placed in one room next to his. I was asked to worship the deities before Prabhupada entered the rooms. I said, I do not know which mantras to worship Vyas and Madhvacharya. I was told, whatever you know about them, think of that and offer a flower, some naivedyam, and some garland with respect. By his order, I did that and offered with Om Madhvaya Namaha and Om Vyasaya Namaha and worshipped the two deities. When I was finished, then Guru Maharaj entered his room. He was using a bungalow which was erected on the top of Chataka Parvat, which is considered to be the extension of Govardhan Hill in Vrindavan, and to climb over which has been forbidden by Mahaprabhu himself. How to adjust? I found the adjustment in this way. Vyas was living over the Himalayas, and Madhva also met him. In connection with serving them, Prabhupada lived there to satisfy them though apparently he had crossed the advice of Mahaprabhu, but he made the adjustment with Vyas and Madhva. This conception allowed him to stay there. For the service of Guru, we can even climb on his bedstead. Sometimes it is necessary to stand on the Simhasana in order to crown the deity. We are told that the Simhasana is supposed to be the extension of Baladev or Nityananda. But for the service necessity, we can approach anywhere and everywhere but not to fulfill our own purpose. To understand when it is necessary to follow the higher statements of the Guru, we sometimes have to enter the higher zone of Siddhanta with Radharani, the Sakis, the Manjaris, etc. But that is only for the purpose of service, and we should not stay there for a long time. We must come back and remain in our own fit position. Otherwise they will be dishonored and they will disappear forever from my mind. I will be nowhere, and once that is withdrawn, we will become disbelievers. We will be helplessly thrown to the plane of atheism. We have to tackle those things very carefully, and only for the necessity of service to our guru. We must always be very particular that we always select our position on a lower standard, not on the same plane as our superiors, the guru, and the Vaishnavas. That is the key to success. Don't try to make such high things an object of your experience. Taking the name of Radharani Even when taking the holy name of Radharani, we give some pranam. O oh, please forgive me. I am not qualified to take your holy name. I am not qualified. I am trying to say so much. With my small tongue, I am taking your holy name. Forgive me, forgive me. I have got the audacity of taking your holy name. She is so high, so great, so noble, that we can't consider ourselves fit to take her holy name. Shukadev Goswami did not directly take Radharani's name in the whole of Bhagavatam, where he has given what is the true perception of divine love. Our Guru Maharaj told so many things, but very rarely did he take the name of Radharani. He had such great respect for her. Once, one big zamandar, a landowner, came to Guru Maharaj and opened the topic that Parvati's beauty was higher than that of the gopis. Prabhupada could not tolerate that idea, and he began to describe the beauty of Radharani with great enthusiasm and emotion. But another force was checking his attempt. Radharani's beauty was being challenged by some quarter, so he had to speak, 
but at the same time he was not prepared to describe that beauty in public. It should not be exposed to them. They are unable to appreciate even a very small portion of that. Two opposite forces from different directions were fighting in him, and he fell from his chair and fainted. Prabhupada was not ready to bear a slight dishonor concerning Radharani. Prabhupada once ordered one gentleman to sing a song by Bhaktivinoda Thakur. Ami Tasvananda Sukhadavasi. There it is mentioned. Radhikara Kunja Andhara Kari Laite Chahise Radhara Hari. Chandravali wants to take away Radha's Hari, thus causing the love grove of Radhika to be overcast with the darkness of gloom. From Sharanagati 545. I am in the group of Radharani and I can't tolerate the sight of the Sakis of the other camp, the camp of Chandravali, Shaibya, etc., because their sight excites in me the idea that they want to take Krishna from the camp of Radharani, making it dark for us. I saw Prabhupada sitting in a canvas chair, patiently hearing Bhaktivinoda Thakur's song. The song was sung twice. During the course of that song, this statement came. Radhikara kunja andhara kari. They want to snatch away Krishna, making the kunja of Radharani dark. Prabhupada felt a shock. His body would jerk. I noticed it. Again the song was repeated, but whenever that point would come, he had a shock as if an arrow had hit him from the back. He could not tolerate. He was not ready to tolerate any dishonor to the camp of Radharani. It was intolerable that Radharani's kunj was dark and Krishna was absent because he has gone to please another. It was inconceivable to Prabhupada. Although Bhaktivinoda Thakur has written this as an impartial statement, in his relative position Prabhupada could not tolerate. Such is the sentiment of the proper devotees of Sri Radhika. We must always keep such topics at a respectable distance over our heads. Pujala Ragapata Gaurava This is a very happy expression, very sweet, and very useful also. Pujala Ragapata Gaurava Herein is the whole tenor of our Guru Maharaj, and the nature of his service. It is not only for him, but he has extended this banner to all.